Uh, okay, let's go for lab 9. This is tutorial 1, confidence intervals. The following video might be helpful. Yeah, you can go through this video and see what happens. Setup. The manufacturer introduced a new version of a machine and it was you it was sued for not disclosing the additional maintenance, co maintenance cost. The average annual co maintenance cost for the older model was $1170. Given the data for the recent machines, decide if the lawsuit holds water. And that means if the lawsuit is reasonable or not. What test or procedure should be run? So here, this is the data and we need to uh, check against the average. Check the average of this data with this one number, 1170. So that's why we go for confidence interval. What is the margin of error? Yeah, we can compute the margin of error easily. So answer should be 697.0661. Okay, so that's fine. Then confidence interval. Mm. What is the statistical interpretation? So confidence interval is 935.767323298999. In our case, the average is equal to 1632.833 and this lies entirely in this interval. So that's why the conclusion we can say that the lawsuit is not reasonable in this case since the average for older models is included in, in this interval. It lies in this interval. We cannot conclude that the new model has a larger maintenance cost. Okay, so that's it. Let's go for task one. What follows use any of the following test procedures, regression confidence interval, one-sided t-test or two-sided t-test. All the procedures should be done with 5% p-value or 95% confidence interval. That's fine. Open, open math credit salary data setup. It is believed that more math credits and the, the students take during the college years, higher their salary will be. So more math credits implies higher credits, higher salary. Given the data, your job is to confirm or disprove this assertion. What test or procedure did you perform? It says that more math credits implies that the student, that the person will be uh, receiving higher salary. Okay, so that's the case of predicting something by using math credits. We are predicting the salary. So that's why we would go for a regression. Okay, simple linear regression. What is the p-value or margin of error? So let us open the data. Here I have opened the math credits salary data and in column A there is math credits that the student had taken in the college years and salary B is represented by column B in thousand dollars. Okay. Here uh, we need to go for regression so that's, let's go to data, data analysis. We need to predict salary. So input Y range is Let's go for this one. So we will be predicting the salary by using math credit. So math credit is the X variable. Oh, okay. Click on levels and click on OK. P value is 0.0016615. Statistical interpretation. Since this is a very small P value, so um, let us go for these three things. Okay. Since the p-value is very small, we are confident that the average of the first sampler is second smaller than the other. Mm, that doesn't make sense. Here we are predicting something. Since the p-value is very small, we are very confident that the averages are different. Uh, since p-value is very small, we are confident that the slope of regression line is not zero. This would be the most appropriate answer. Okay, since here we are not talking about smaller or bigger than any other or neither we are comparing whether the averages are different or not we are instead trying to predict one data from another so uh, definitely slope of regression line is not zero might be the correct answer for this case okay that's the best choice here so that's fine conclusion so here the assumption is it is believed that more math credits implies more salary so yes, I am confident that the above assertion is correct. So I would better say I am very confident that above assertion is correct. Okay. Mm. Task two: Use the brains data setup. It is is it reasonable to claim that the average head circumference is less than 56? <coughs> Here, I have opened the brains data, and you can see the head circumference is this column in column C. Now. 
the question asks us that is it reasonable to claim the average head circumference is less than 56 okay so we are trying to compare the average head circumference the column C with 56 okay comparing average head cir circumference with a number 56 so if we compare a data with a specific number then we need to go for confidence interval that's it what is the p-value or margin of error so average what is the average average is simply 56.125 and so average is 56.125 the standard deviation uh, equals stdev Array is this one head circumference okay. so this is standard deviation 1.826 and margin of error is uh, yeah equals confidence dot t start alpha is 0 0.05 and standard deviation is 1.8266 and size is there are 20 people okay so c2 up to c21 so that's why this is 20 the bracket so that's our margin of error now let's go for confidence interval the left one is 56.125 minus the margin of error that's 0 0.8548 for 9 let's round it off so that's our left endpoint now right endpoint would be equals 56.125 plus 0.8549 equals to 56.9799 so our confidence interval is this one what is the p-value or margin of error our p-value or margin of error is 0.85 so we don't have that here statistical interpretation mm, since you can see here that the claimed value 56 lies inside this uh, confidence interval right 55.27 up to 56.97 so um, let's see we are 95 percent certain that 56 is not within the confidence interval no that's not true p-value is small enough uh, no we are not going for that since here in confidence interval we do not talk about p-value uh, since p-value is too large the above claim is not reasonable no, we won't go for p-value, so none of this, okay? We should be talking about uh, whether the whether this value, 56, whether the value that we want to compare lies inside the confidence interval or not, okay? So, conclusion, yes, I am confident that the above claim is correct. No, we cannot claim that the above claim is correct. So, no, we can't do that. No, we cannot claim that the above claim is correct since um, it says that the claim is that head circumference is less than 56 but the but this value lies inside the confidence interval this one 55.27 to 56.97 and so that's why we cannot claim that uh, average head circumference is less than 56 let's go to task 3 open brain data claim male and female subjects have different total brain surface areas oh yes okay so male and female subjects have different total brain surface areas so here we are trying to compare between the surface area total brain surface area of male and female subjects that means we are comparing the averages of two subgroups of a group and trying to find the significance difference between those two okay so male and female subjects have different total brain surface area so we would go for two-sided t-test okay here's the brain data yeah luckily uh, male and female has been already uh, sorted and total surface area total surface area is this one okay so since we have two tail t-test so let's go for finding out the formula finding out the p-value equals t-test the first array is the total surface area of male comma total surface area of female 
female brain volume and total test that's 2 comma 3 is the p value so that's it then 0 0.90 0 0.90 is our now here statistical interpretation since the, since p value is too large we cannot conclude that the very two variables have different averages okay that might be a case that might be a choice since p value is too large we cannot claim that there is connection between two variables no connection means regression okay so we won't go for that since p value is small we can claim that there is a connection between two variables this is the correct choice uh, conclusion yes i am confident the averages are different no i cannot claim that averages are different since the p value is very large so we won't be able to conclude anything from that so i would go for this one okay so that's task number three use the weight versus iq data common sense dictates that a person's weight and iq should not be related however one never knows until one examines the data so here um, the question is asking us to find the relation or connection between these two that is of course connection or prediction always boils down to regression okay given the data iq and weight for 29 students 29 students your job is to check if the common sense assumption is reasonable or maybe it is not okay regression is the thing okay now let's find out p value and margin of error here i have uploaded weight versus iq data and since we have already assume that we have already assumed that we would be using regression okay <clears throat> let us go for data data analysis regression okay so here let us consider that weight predicts iq so that would be here we are trying to see that whether weight of a person predicts its his or her iq so for input y range we would go for iq and for input x range i would go for weight okay so that's it and levels click on okay, okay p value is 0 0.7499 that's nearly 75 percent okay so p value is this one okay since the okay statistical interpretation since p value is very large okay so we would go for either these two since this is this is very small a p value is very large we cannot claim that averages are different no that's not that's not the thing okay here we are not uh, differentiating between both of them but we are instead trying to find relation between them so since p value is large we cannot claim that iq and weight are related so this is the one that i would choose okay conclusion i have no statistical evidence to claim iq and weight are related so this would be the appropriate choice let me see if there is any other appropriate choices i am confident that iq and weight are related no we should have very small p value to say this i am confident that iq and weight are not related no i can't say this one also since um, larger p value means we can't conclude conclude anything okay we don't have any statistical evidence to support the claim okay so that's task four let's go to task five In task five it says use random number generator under data analysis to simulate the following data set create 10 columns each 20 points long and use the following parameters numbers of variables 10 numbers of data point 20 distribution number normal mean 40 standard deviation 10 random seed 1 2 3 4 data should be in columns a b c up to j okay let's go for data data analysis and go for random uh, random number generation number of variables is 10 okay. since we are creating 10 columns and random numbers is 20 distribution is normal mean is 40 you can see in the background standard deviation is 10 and random series 1 2 3 4 okay and data should be in columns a b c okay that's fine so here we have data is from a b c up to j all right that's fine now let us read the question randomly pick two columns say b and h so let us take b and h b and h okay and perform two-sided t test okay Ah, okay so all right 
let's read the question randomly pick two columns say column b and h perform two sided t test on these two data columns record the p value and repeat this procedure several times at least five times so let's do that for five times that is each time randomly pick two columns perform two sided t test and record the p value answer the questions so here so let me uh, find out the t test for a and b a and b okay t test for a and b equals t test column a is this one comma column b is this one okay comma two comma three okay so that's fine a and b is this one here i have computed five two-sided t test for different columns okay a and b c and d e and f g and h i and j so these are the p values okay so a and b their p value is 0 0.38 c and d 0 0.54 e and f 0 0.26 g and h 0 0.059 i and j 0 0.083 so all of these p values are greater than five percent even this is the smallest one in all of these five five uh, five sets which is also nearly uh, six percent okay five point nine one percent and this is eight percent so others are thirty percent fifty percent twenty six percent okay so let's read the question what did we observe most of the p values are very small no p values are very different some are small some are large but very few if any below percent no most of the p values are very large around 0 0.9 0 0.95 range okay let's check that no that's not true essentially all p values p values are below 5 percent no that's not the correct one uh, the most possible answer would be p values are very different some large some small but very few if any below 5 percent so this would be the appropriate choice okay since you can see that all of the p values are greater than uh, five percent so the smallest is very few okay so there is less or no this one what is the statistical interpretation since data are created randomly one expect to see small p value for test no the test t test work is designed since in most cases it detect the difference sometimes even with one percent threshold no that doesn't make sense the t-test work rate is as designed in most cases it did not did not detect the di in most cases it did not detect the difference since the data are created with equal means or equal averages since while constructing the data we can see that the distribution was normal and mean was 40 okay so field 40 is the mean and a standard deviation is 10 so all the data are created with equal mean okay that's 40 and equally standard deviation that's 10 okay but it did not detect the difference since the data created with equal means okay so i would go for this one all right now create one more random column of data this time use the following parameters number of variables one number of data points 20 this is normal okay so let's go for that so let's go for data and data analysis random number generation okay so number of variables is just one and random numbers is 20 that's fine normal that's fine mean is mean is 50 standard deviation 10 34 34 okay so click on okay so that's fine now here let us copy this data and put it somewhere here in column m okay let's write down okay so let's put this in column n okay since we are we have already populated column m okay so that's fine then uh, then uh, randomly pick one of the column out of a b say column f and perform two-sided test based on this randomly picked column and the newly created column m record the p-value repeat this procedure several times at least five times that is each time randomly pick one data from the 10 previously created and perform two-sided t-test okay so at least five times we need to do that okay so okay so let us go for 
a and a and n in our case this is n let's go for b and n b and n let's go for f and n j and n okay so these are the five random things okay so let's go for equals t test um, a and n this is a comma this is n comma two comma three okay so that's fine all right okay so i have um i have done two tail t test for a and n okay a and n b and n f and n i and n j and n okay so you can see that all of the p values are very 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 small 0 0.009 0 0.009 0 0.0003, 0 0.0001, 0 0.009, 1.75, e to the power negative 0.5, which are very, very small p-values. Okay. So what did you observe? Most of the p-values are very small and some some below 5%. Well, this part is correct, but this is not correct. P-values are very different. Some small, some very large. No. Most p-values are very large around no. Essentially, all p values are below 5% and some even below 1% range. Yes, this should be the correct one. What is the statistical interpretation? Since data are created randomly, one expects to see small p-value for t-test. That might be a case, but uh, the t-test worked as designed since in most cases it detected a difference since sometimes even 1% threshold. This might be an appropriate answer. Uh, the test t test worked as design in most cases it did not detect the difference no it did de it detected the difference okay and the data were not created with equal means so this is incorrect so b is correct okay so that's all for ta uh, task 5 and this this completes the lab 9 okay so that's fine so i'm getting 110%.